let's move on though and let's talk lists we've done legacy talk now we're doing lists because it's an na podcast now i love a list we do is lists and legacy talk okay I love a list. we're gonna go through our top five teams and then we're gonna go through our top five players entering the shift summer league and then that tournament in dallas after that can i add so, a caveat before we get going talk to me you got to the list before i did and i didn't want to mm-hmm. just copy your homework so i tried to within reason not copy you as much as i could so with no, that out of the way job. let's go thank you all right so at number five i'll start and then you go what yours and then we'll talk about it and this my is number teams five, right teams we're doing teams okay. right now yeah correct yeah number my number five team is the brazilian demons furia I think that they've shown... I was a Furia hater going into this. I didn't think they were going to make top eight. I thought they were a silly team. But they showed me different. They got some big wins when they needed to. They came back from down against Oxygen. They got their revenge on on uh, on Vitality. Mm. Uh, I, I like the way they play. And I think they still have that... They still got like that aura factor where they can just come up on stage and scream and hit clips and just knock you knock you on your, your head early. And you don't... You never really get your... Uh, your balance back by the time you do it's over so yeah I got Fury I think they're going to be a, a real real contender in Dallas they punch early really like that team they're a feast or famine team for me I think they honestly look best when lost is the player that they're facilitating for the most but mm-hmm. you know I understand that Yan is what he is so I'll back yeah. off do you want my number five go ahead is this cheating? Are we just doing teams from London? I put Carmine no, Core. No, it's going into the... Uh, oh, not this again. I can't get away from these guys, dude. I can't. I can't with this team. I. It's tough for me. I get it. I understand what happened. So are the world beaters. Um, but I just don't know how... It's very tough for me. I'm trying to do a better job as I mature, Michael of not being so nice. reactive and switching up who's at the top of my list every single time we have results. Carmine Core last season, before this team even came together, I would have had all three of these players probably within the top seven, top eight from what we saw last season. I was super impressed by Atau at the World Championship. And I just feel like if you have that much talent, clearly this roster is not perfect cohesive fit with one another a little bit of a a square into a circle here and there with what they're trying to do on the pitch but i think the talent is undeniable i think they don't really have the same level of pressure that the falcons of the world have or that vitality will have to you know remain as champions bds have been spun out in two straight majors early on in pretty dominated fashion um so i think carmine core can kind of sneak in here as dark horse sleeping giants um so i got him at five i just like it's not even about the miss regional for me they didn't make a regional final like like luna galaxy second luna galaxy mentioned this podcast made a regional final and carmen corp did right yeah. like oxygen who did not look good at the major made a regional final and carmen corp didn't like they just weren't that good this split and listen if you want to say, I'm, I'm, you know, this is a projection, so I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be as, as, uh, it's not a power rank. If it was a power ranking, I'd be, I'd be more, I'd be more upset. I'd be, oh, you, honestly, I'd have lost my head. I would have exploded. Um, but, um, you know, I just, I don't see it because here's the thing. Okay, I made a little tier list. Mm. I like to make a little tier list after before every event. I made a world's tier list, and I put, I put Fury and Carmen Corp in the same tier, the third tier. And you know what the tier was called? It wasn't called the A tier last year. You know what it's called? What's that? Definitely could win, probably will find a way to lose. And mm. that's how I feel about Carmen Corp. Because for some reason, this team loves finding a way to lose. Ever since their 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 regional streak got broken, they've just fat it's not that they haven't been good enough. It's that they find ways to lose. And I I worry more about a team that seems to find ways to lose than a team that like gets bad breaks. Right, like General Mates got a bad break, but General Mates on land has, mo- has mostly just found ways to win. Yeah, Carmen Corp finds ways to lose, and until they show me that they're not going to find ways to lose in these big moments, I can't put them in my top five. The worst case scenario, and of course, like this is like a, a talent vacuum, right? Like Carmen Corp mm-hmm. for me, they're just so good that they deserve a shout. I think that mm-hmm. your tier name is a very apt portrayal of where Carmen Corp find themselves. The worst mm-hmm. case scenario is that this team have already decided. 
that this is the yeah. end of the line that they're yeah. going to be breaking up and that this they're kind of just mailing this one in um yeah. if that's where they find themselves then you know this is just silly but if we were to take all the scenarios and carmine core end up being the world champions i'd be like yeah like it's, it's like i said they can do it i just i just don't think they will <laughs> um number four for me uh i'm gonna kind of go back to what you said i'm not trying to let recency get too into it mm -hmm. and i'll explain my reasoning after i got bds here i know that the last time we saw them was really bad but here's my thing okay mm -hmm. we talked about this in our major predictions a couple episodes ago the last result for bds does not matter for the entirety of monkey moon's career if you look at the things he's done online versus on land versus like tournament tournament zero there is actually zero like correlation this man dominated our lcs x lost the final for no reason somehow just 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 it was over comes in doesn't win a single regional in the fall of our 21 22 wins the major okay then mm -hmm. wins a regional comes in, I think is the overall number two seed, beats that Queso team, gets perfect swept by FaZe. Goes into sprint, wins two regionals in the spring major, goes out 06 and double elim to Sam and OCE, wins the world championship. That was his 2021-22 season. So I'm going to bet on the talent of Drawley and Exotic and the, and the experience of, of Monkey Moon, and I'm going to bet that once again, nothing matters that came before it. They win regionals, they go out 16th in the in the spring in the last London major, not this one. They went to regionals. This one, they get shellacked by a team that can't, can't make it past top eight in, in domestically. So for me, I'm going to bet on what I see as a team, and I'm not going to worry about results because they're clearly not worried about results. I don't know what it is. They just they got a little bit of a, a stank to them in playoffs. They are a silly team. They're totally a silly team. They're two and ten in playoff yeah. games this season yeah. in majors but that's exactly what monkey moon would do before he sweeps the world championship it's true like that's, it's, it's just what it is they 4-1 vitality and then drop three straight best of sevens to them on land it makes no sense it make he doesn't make any sense i'm done trying to figure it out i'm just betting on him i for that reason am not totally mad at the bet but bds i i don't know man i i i, I just <laughs> we haven't seen it yet and uh I hear you. All three of them. They have a Canadian too. Is that so? You know, Drali is Canadian. I is that so? That. He's uh, like he has Canadian lineage, but he sure. does represent Morocco and speak French. Mm -hmm. However, to me, he is Canadian. So, because he's just you know, hey, listen, one drop. You know, you got a little bit of it in you. You got all of it in you. That's me. That's that's me and Drali. We're gonna hang out with Jane Apps later. Actually, I think we're all gonna hang out at the Canadian Rocket League Legends Club that you can only get in if you're a baller. So we'll be there. Any Canadian is full Canadian, I suppose. Type shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, just had the NHL, uh, uh, the finals. Yeah, that was a tough one for. We brought it back to Ooh, Florida. Back. Yeah, warm weather hockey, man. Jalen, I know you're watching this. It's not cool that ho that warm weather teams win. I don't care that you got a ring. Anyway, what's your number four? <laughs> Who's your My number, number four? four let me go back to it. By the way, just before I click off of this, shout out to to shift, rle.gg for supplying these stats. Yeah. But, Incredible uh, stuff. Let me just lay these on you real quick. In S tier, so at majors, best of sevens, so major playoffs, if we are to filter by rating, the worst rating, do you have a guess? I'm curious. Uh, It's got to be juicy. You see like a .4 in, like a, in the semifinal, right? Chronic. Isn't that surprising? It's not, though. No, he doesn't perform not, super well. It's not surprising to me. Let me give you. Let me no give comment. you the next three players in the lowest rating. Is it exotic? Drawly Monkey Moon. Exotic Monkey Moon. Which so, is that's crazy too because I saw our shift graphic that we tweeted out. Monkey Moon was fifth overall in rating for the tournament. He was great. So he would have been probably number one if he didn't just throw it all away. Such a Monkey Moon thing to do. Such a Monkey like Moon thing. Just dominate thing. the Swiss stage and then, or not really dominate, but hard carry your team in the Swiss stage and then just absolutely bottle it in the top eight that means he's winning the world championship i think let's keep it french from my number four we only could do five so i'm not surprised mm -hmm. but i'm kind of surprised that they're not on your list team vitality former world champions yep we it got hurts. alpha on the roster radosin was sick zen is the best player in the world surprised that they did not make your list after uh you know putting up great results 
having great statistics, which are, are, you know, you can take them or leave them. But I think um, Pyroblock on, on Twitter was putting up Legend. these kind of X, Y graphs of how good yeah. offense and defense was and vitality follow, were by the way. Go peak of powers. Go follow Pyroblock X. Yeah. Shout out. So, you know, vitality across the board, they're checking all the boxes here. Um, I'm surprised that they did not make your list. They just feel like a team who can't win. And it sucks because they have won. But there are teams that I feel like all five teams on my list, I think, can win the world championship. Mm-hmm. And as much as it hurts because I haven't ridden up with them all season, both Vitality and Gen G just feel like teams that are like, oh, man, they lost to the the team that won the world championship in top four. It was a seven-game series. They, they had a 3-2 lead. Like, that's just it, the aura. That's the aura they have. And I'm sorry, but the magic's that's not gone. Too yeah. it's Well, it's just that they've been around for so so long, and they've regressed a little bit, I think, individually, Alpha and Radosin. Um, I think they're very Zen centric when they used to not be. Yeah. And um, I think teams just have so much tape on them. It's like I said about G2. Once you have enough tape on a team, you can beat them, uh, even if the talent's different. So that's my theory. What game was it? Was it game three that they won against Furia? Or no, they went down 3 0, right? Yeah. And then Zen just like started doing whatever. And then. Yeah, and Zen ridiculous. really popped off. Like, even mm-hmm. like he was animated yeah, he was, he was as like an out individual. The, the crowd. I was like, okay, yeah. we still got a little juju here. Um, no, but- he wants it, man. He's special. He's literally the, to me, like the generational prospect in Rocket League, on and off the pitch, brain, mechanics, everything. Like, he's going to be so good for so long. I don't know how much longer he's going to be so good with these two. But, um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's pretty clear that, to me, they just don't seem like a team that have the ceiling of a world champion anymore. Who's your number three? I think we have the same number three, correct? Uh, so let's just... <laughs> I think we might have gone chalk for top three. I think we no, I think we have a different. I want to say we have a different. No, we don't. We have it all top three. Okay, let's talk top three. Okay, okay. our top three. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to list. Do it you want to go one by one, or do you want to list them? Let's just list them all off. Why not? It's, there's no there's no suspense anymore. We got gentle mates, bronze team, falcon silver, G two stride gold. Yeah, and I think that's unanimous across across the. Uh, I think it's unanimous across the Rocket League verse. I think everyone sees those as the top three teams right now. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, it gets weird. As you've seen, we got four different teams as in our four and five spot. But I mean, to the the this it's such a styles makes fights thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, gentle mates were playing so fast, and Falcons were ready, and they were just boom, boom, collision, 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 50, 50, 50, weird bounce, score, blah, 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 and they got to G two, and it was like. Slowed it down. Yeah. Everybody slowed it down and they couldn't. Okay, come, come on, bring that pressure. Keep working at that boost. Why is Atomic down there while you guys are on offense stealing your boost coming back? And then all of a sudden, boom, right? I think G2 struggled with Gentle Mates in the major one because Gentle Mates will fu- won't full commit the way the Falcons war- will. But I think the Falcons are a better matchup for Gentle Mates because Gentle Mates aren't prepared for another team to just full send it at them the way that the Falcons Little rock, do. paper, scissors action. Yes, exactly. And I think all three of them should be considered the top three teams um, to, to to be going. I think they've been the best three teams in the world all season. What about you? I, I was blown away. I did my predictions because I, I think we're all contractually obligated to put out a predictions yes. video before major happened. Shout out to happen. Cody. It's not shout out Cody. It's not really my bag, but I felt like, you know, it's kind of a moment. You got to be there, yeah. you know, and I did not have gentle mates making the playoffs um, just because it seemed like they kind of had lost a little bit of that zip. If juicy is your MVP and he's not really showing up, I think he was third on the team and goals scored. They really do not score a lot of goals. Mm-hmm. They allow a lot. They are not very demo heavy. They're not very pass heavy. So they shouldn't kind be of, very good. That's, you that's look just at them. They shouldn't be good. They just are because they have aura. They and do. People say I'm lying, but that Seiko aura, when a major kind of just, and then get your thing and go home, it matters. Mental. Seiko with the you know a seemingly must be quarter million dollar watch that he's rocking <laughs> yeah. for all these events. He's a killer man. He's just here to get paid and win, man. Who's no emotion. No emotion, wins a series, yeah. takes out the headset. You know, he's he's cool very, as can very be. Very Jokic-esque, I would say. Very he, he certainly is. And then you got Itachi, who is animated, who mm. is just, you know, I, I think we might correct the narrative here. And th- this is for the culture of this podcast. So we're going to correct the narrative on Itachi here in a second. But yeah, he was electric over the course of this event. 
top goal scorer. I think he put away mm-hmm. eight in that series against uh, Falcons, or maybe it was against BDS. But it's one of BDS. those, he was cooking against BDS, man. Like almost one hundred percent goal BDS in the midfield. Yeah, BDS, BDS midfield the whole for four years has been the best, and he just was like, watch this. He crazy. really has yeah. come a long way from being constantly on zero boost and out of plays, mm-hmm. just trying to make something out of it. Itachi is that mm-hmm. dude. Juicy clearly has gotten over the kind of ricketiness that he mm-hmm. saw on Moist when he was at Land. That team is not playing. Um, and I don't know yeah. what the secret sauce is. Maybe it's Eversax, but that team no, comes sure. ready to ball. Well, I think, too, the sort of mental attitude that they have where you have a sort of like – yin yang and but both of them are very positive it's like itachi's not animated and emotional he's animated controlled and he's keeping his guys in it and seiko is a rock you never have to like juicy for he's young right he's 17 Mm -hmm. he's got one teammate who's always positive no matter what and he's got another teammate that looks like nothing phases him there's no better environment to be in than having those two guys by your side at least on during the game i don't know how it is off the field for me i think that what they what, what gentle mate showed me is that like they seem to just not play worse on land. Yeah. They just they play the same way. And teams play better online, but they don't play worse on land, right? Yeah. And I will no longer be doubting them. If they can make it there, goodness gracious, they they always like almost miss it. If they can make it there, it seems like they figured out uh the exact way to just keep their level and let other teams nerves beat them for themselves and that's why they can win so many one goal games right because they're not the ones freaking out and forcing stuff they're just like let's play our game let's chill out get our stuff and we're good um to me i mean we were one a goal away from seiko's fifth final of the open era uh he's probably the most underrated player of this era he might be the best player of this era in terms of the 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 resume not the talent i mean he might be there for the talent too um and then we've, we've talked a length about g2 and falcons we don't have to do it anymore but yeah very clear top three i feel like it's a shame well it's nice that even if one of those teams run into each other early in the playoffs in uh dallas that there's the hybrid bracket so we still have a chance you can hear me i think i froze them make the the championship instead of a a brutal kind of um quarterfinal loss for one of them but yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it all right we've talked about g2 and falcons already let's move in we're going to talk a little bit something a little more fun because teams are boring they're too like, they're too academic. Let's talk about players. Let's talk about hoopers. Let's talk about ballers. We're gonna count down for five again. Give me your top five players, uh, Belair. I'll let you start with your number five player going into the major. All dogs on the list. I really struggled with this more than I'm proud to admit. Um, it, this list is kind of for fun, but I really, I really languished over this. I ended up going first killer. My boy. And they don't have the results. They seemingly don't have the same level of cohesion that you see from these other top teams who are contending. Yet, I still feel like First Killer is one of the most impactful on both ends of the pitch players that we have in the world, Um, which some people may not agree with, which is fair. He clearly is taking a different approach and is stylistically asked to do different things with Gen G than he was with FaZe prior to. But I still think First Killer is one of those guys. How do you feel about it? I'm never gonna I'm never ever gonna discount any FK enjoyment. Okay. Mm. That kid is a beast. I thought he was pretty easily their best player. Like I thought he kind of carried them to that top eight. Agreed. Um and I think if they had won against G two and gotten that match against uh, SSG instead of G2 getting the mask into SSG. Gen G probably gets a top four, and we're probably talking about him as maybe the best player of the tournament. Mm-hmm. I don't have him on my top. He was right, right, like it was between him and my next, my next player or the player I had number five. But I mean, you know, he was the top five player statistically at the event. He was the second best statistical player in North America this whole season, and the whole narrative of the season is that he's not the same guy because he's moved from one to two on the shifts rating points per game list. Yeah. Um, he's a freak. He's a generational talent that will unfortunately probably go down as by far the best player to never win a land. But, um, I mean, he'll never be forgotten in my heart because he's been rocking my world for almost half a decade now. Um, my number five is also a North American player. Um, and it is, uh, L Jesus, LJ Logan Wilt, the kid. 
man, this guy is absolutely sensational. I can't. It's like old school NA ball over at SSG. It's one guy. Give me the ball. Get out of the way. Right. And he he got them to a top eight that way. They beat Furia, which is a great win mm-hmm. uh, for SSG. Um, they almost beat Falcons. You know, he just has something against Mina because he's he's dominated the twins a couple times and almost beat them at their best best form ever this time. Um, offensively, I think he is. Yeah, I think he's one of one as a shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, personally, you know, there's great shooters. Itachi, we talked about, is a great shooter. Um, I think uh, Beast Mode is really, really underrated as a shooter because he does a lot of stuff great. But man, that kid can put the ball in from anywhere and it's always placed and it's always there. I feel like I'm watching V1 Beast Mode again, where it's like everyone's just like, when this guy gets his G2, he's going to be a land winning player. And I don't know if there's another G2 to be found in North America or if he's going to have to import someone. But man, he is uh, he is just a joy to watch. Probably the most exciting player to watch at the land, I'd say. Um, and uh, just yeah, what a player, man! What a player. So uh, using you know traditional terms, athletic on the offensive yeah. end, he can do yeah. so much on the ball. Those musties, like You're whether insane. it's just he imposes himself so Dude. well. Like as soon he, I think there's a there's a there's value in making yourself feel like a threat. Mm. Like FK, Zen, Joyo, Yan. It's like these guys, when they have the ball, the other team, they're alert. Like, oh God, right? We got to make sure we challenge early. We challenge hard. And he mm-hmm. just does it with such grace. He, athletics is a great way to put it. He makes it look so easy. But it's it's terrifying for the other team, it seems. Great in transition out of defense. Mm-hmm. I feel like the only the biggest differentiator for me between FK and LJ is that LJ has a tendency, SSG has a tendency to get a little floppy on the goal line, Mm -hmm. a little divey, a little panicked. You know, don't always love that. Mm -hmm. But if he's breaking out in transition, he can go end to end with it. I feel like the solo aerial play is kind of a dying breed because nowadays Mm -hmm. if you don't get ball, you you hit the player, you know, Mm -hmm. and you have to leave it for a teammate. But he's one of the last few who, if he's on the ball and gets his reset, he can beat two and put it away. He's just Mm -hmm. so nasty. All the angles, all the plays uh not mad at lj at all let's go to four and now i believe we're kind of alternating a bit yeah we're just we're switching yeah so my number four is itachi Mm -hmm. we talked about him at length um just very prime monkey moon-esque you know he's so willing to just make the right play every single time uh he clearly so believes in chat like controlling the midfield to be winning the game controlling the boost to win the game it's very smart it's very cerebral but it's also hyper aggressive i think mm-hmm. when we think of smart cerebral players we think of like an extra or like a daniel who was typical where it's like you know it's kind of slower likes to take their time likes to play angles but the, the itachi way of being cerebral is like i am going to make your life as difficult as possible in the most efficient way possible for five minutes at a time and you're going to you're not going to be able to deal with it so you just got to strap in and pray i miss my shots or i over commit once or twice um i think he makes it like monkey moon used to and still kind of does from time to time um he makes it almost impossible to beat them four times right and we've seen it on land you literally almost impossible to beat them four times on land because he's constantly just imposing himself on you we talked about that with lj but he does it in a different way and I, I've loved watching him. Consummate professional, always seems to make his teammates better, can mm-hmm. be impactful on the ball, off the ball, defensively, in the midfield. Um, you know, he doesn't always, uh, you know, how Tatum, it's like he can have a bad shooting night, but he's going to lock mm-hmm. you up defensively or be impactful mm-hmm. with his physicality. If Itachi doesn't have it going, uh, from like a stat standpoint, he can still always be impactful. Um, yeah, and totally. you kind of know what you're getting from him at a consistent clip. And at these top levels, consistency is one of the first words that's important. So uh, that's uh, that's why uh, he may or may not make my list as well. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. So who, who's your number four, though? TRK. Mm-hmm. I, coming into this event, thought that we were going to walk away thinking Rawas was a top three player in the world, which I still think is in play. I mm-hmm. think Rawas didn't really get, be, wasn't really able to show how impactful he can be and how he's developed offensively. We've always known what he can do on the defensive end of the field, but I think he's really grown and flourished offensively. But TRK, man, like 
old guard or whatever. He has still got it. He is the king of the 50s now. He knows how to strike. He never gets demoed, which I think is kind of one of those rare qualities where like if mm-hmm. your team isn't getting demoed very often, it makes calming easier. It makes rotations easier. And you keep your boost. Yep. Great, great at keeping boost, great at stealing boost. He's at the top mm-hmm. of those charts as well. So really, really impressed with TRK showing over the course of this event. Yeah, I'd agree. I think I'm a little bit more impressed though. Mm. I think I'm a little more impressed than you were. I'm not going to lie. Hey, because... I've, I've laid it out. Because I got TRK at number three. Um, I was like you, but with Rawas. Oh, sorry, with Kaleers. Okay. I was like, if I had to make an all RLCS team, I know they talked about it on first touch, so I was thinking about it. It would have been for the regular season, at least leading up to then, Zen, B, Smoke, Kaleers. I think they were the wow. three best players of the season. Um, but, uh, and it's funny. I remember when I was at the World Championships in Dallas um, two years ago, mm-hmm. I was doing covering it for Shift. I had a conversation with Mr. Johnny Boy. Uh, and I asked him who he thought the best player in the world was, and he said, well, it's got to be between Yan, TRK, Beast Motor, Vatira. And it's like we have this idea that things like change so fast, but like you make a top 10 list now, and all four of those guys are in like what the top seven. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe we're not moving as fast as we once were. Mm. Um, but yeah, he is, like you said, he does everything fundamental at such a high level. He's one of those players, very similar to First Killer, where the they they have that flashy sort of pop off like mechanical side to them, and it almost overshadows how good they are at the little things. Yep. Um, I think you know my boy over at the School of Rocket League has a fantastic video on both of them, and he both kind of talks about the sort of little things they do that make themselves just not just like a like a Yan or an AJ, right? Yep. More more than that. Um, and I think when you do the little things so well, it allows you to perform in the biggest moments because that's muscle memory. You don't have to think about the margins if you're always filling them in. Um, so yeah, I'm. he was the third best player at the event to me. I think he's the third best player in the world going into the championship, world championships. And even to, to, if I could put a finer point on that, just a snapshot of how good TRK was, he does the things that you can't teach. Like I think in that game seven, he got the dunk on Seiko mm-hmm. on the goal line with like 15 seconds left. And mm-hmm. then he puts away the overtime, like the long strike yeah. could have easily not made one of those. And the result for Falcons and the way yeah. we talk about them shifts completely. So he yeah. has the ice. Yeah, totally. Love a clutch demon. But yeah, you stole my pick for this one for your number three. We're just trading back and forth. Yeah, I got I got a Tachi. What more can we say? Um, I, 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 I personally, maybe I'm in the minority here. I really like the default Fennec, you know, that kind of Matt Brown that yeah. he was, that he was pulling out. Drolly was on it. Jack was on it. Atachi looked the best on it. So I think it's his car now. Um, <laughs> but you know, I was blown away by his ability to score. I feel like he's a great floor setter and a great general, but um, we don't often see him flash the scoring that mm-hmm. frequently um, like he was able to do here. So I feel like you already re- put a really fine point on it. So I'll stay uh, short on my praise of Itachi, who was just awesome yeah. this event. It's it's tough to be a scorer and a controller, right? Mm. It's tough to be a floor. Oh, another basketball reference. This is my favorite episode that we've ever done. <laughs> it's tough to be a you know. It's not a, not everyone can be James Harden. Not every some people. You, people are usually eighteen and ten or thirty and seven. There, mm. It's hard to be thirty and ten, and he was thirty and ten easy every single game uh, in terms of his ability to keep everything in line, make sure Seiko wasn't going to get overwhelmed in the back. Uh, and make sure that he was putting stuff away that Juicy was giving him. So all, all praise to Itachi. So what I want to do for this last one is we have the same second and first, but they're inverted. I'm pretty sure everyone listening knows who those two people are. If Correct. you don't know, they're Beast Mode and Zen. I have Zen number one. Bel Air has Beast Mode number one. Mm-hmm. So I want to hear your case for Beast Mode as the best player in the world over Zen. And then I will tell you th- my case for Zen. I think if I'm going to be short about it, best player best team kind of is is where i landed so it's like an Um, mvp type thing you know like i i think he certainly deserves consideration but if somebody has a strong argument for zen i'm all ears i think beast mode showed that he on a on a team of all stars was the most impactful of those and Mm -hmm. i feel like the results that we've seen over the course of the season and him being the most impactful player 
basically throughout, in, in my opinion, maybe, you know, here or there, Daniel has shown flashes, Atomic shown mm-hmm. flashes. It's Beast Mode's team. So that's kind of where I, I landed there. I tried to not overthink it. Yeah, so I actually think the same thing in terms of the logic, but over the span of since Zen joined. Yes. Rocket League. The RLCS, I should say, not Rocket League. Yeah. Where it feels like, yes, they, at that point this season, Drawley was the best player in Europe. Mm-hmm. At a point this season, Itachi or Juicy or Seiko was the best player in Europe. Um, but I feel like, you know, we actually did this exercise when I was on your podcast like a year ago. If I gave, if I was an org and I came to you and I gave you a blank check and I said, sign whoever you want. I want to build the best team I can. Buyout fees, I don't care. Contract fees, I don't care. Spend it. The first person you're calling is done. Yeah. And I love Beast Mode. Beast Mode is the second person you're calling. I don't think anyone would, would deny that. Maybe Drawley. Maybe if you're a EU fanboy, you pick Drawley. But um, I think he, the, the like I said, the intangibles off the, fi- off the court, off the field. Sorry. I'm just so excited to talk ball. <laughs> Um, the intangibles off the field, yeah. uh, the, the leadership, the ability to play multiple roles, the mechanics, the creativity, like I genuinely think, and this is not the, me disres- trying, trying to be disrespectful to Alpha and Radosan. They're very good players. I genuinely think if you put like any other player on that team, except maybe beast mode, who I think has proven to be a hard carry at times for, for players who may not have been at the level that they were performing at without him. I, I don't know if this is a major team in Europe. Like if I, if you told me Drawley was going to be starting the season on Vitality and Zen was going to be on BDS, I would tell you that I think BDS is going to win every LAN and I think Vitality will be somewhere with Oxygen, right? And Drawley's the best young player in Europe, best rookie in Europe. Um, to me, his he has, set, he has set a new standard in the same way that Justin did, in the same way that Krenobi did, in the same way that Monkey Moon did at one point. Mm-hmm. And I'm not willing to move off him until somebody, like if Beast Mode goes and is the best player at the World Championship, best player at Esports World Cup, then I'll be like, okay, I think he's past him for now. But my final NBA comp and the most accessible one that I'll make in this is like 2015, 2016. Steph Curry might have been better than LeBron James, but LeBron James was still LeBron James. And when it mattered, it was still LeBron James. I and to you. me, Zen is lebron james like he is just the best player and i think he cares about being the best player and i think he cares about winning so much that i think eventually he'll just be back up there and then there'll be another player that has a great event we'll be like well is he better than zen and if he's the benchmark he's the best player right if like that's that's my that's my argument i think that's a productive exercise to think about it like if you were to take this player and then put them with two let's like call them zen average on players just nameless yeah. average players whoever replacement that is level players yeah replacement level players who would have the best team mm-hmm. i feel like you're probably right it's probably zen like beast See, mode this is, is why i like up. having you on my, my my other co-host would never just be like that was a really good idea they'd be like waffling cringe what's this guy talking about but see this is why this is you know what i'm making a call i'm making because the ends better stay in england you know this is great i get i get told i'm right <laughs> This is fantastic. I'm talking about basketball. This is the best. This is the best thing ever. It's incredible. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, it's no. We're it's, we're like a Bill Simmons podcast. <laughs> we're just talking ball. I'm just telling you everything you're saying is correct. This is excellent. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So top five. I'm gonna recite mine quickly, and then you can as well. I have LJ at five. I have Itachi at four. TRK at three. Uh, Beast mode at two, and Zen at one. Yeah, and I had First Killer at 5, TRK at 4, Itachi at 3, Zen at 2, and Virtuoso at 1. Dude, I just missed that. I completely forgot. He did he was the eighth hot, he was the eighth player in shift rating, you know, so that's Is that so? Yeah, he was eighth overall. Uh, actually above uh First Killer, I believe. No, for First Killer was top 5. He was above Beast Mode. Beast Mode was 10th. So Well, he's not yes. very good. So <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm glad you're seeing it.